Do you remember how we started with APs? The sum of an AP, right? We looked at these partial sums, okay? We're gonna start in exactly the same way. If I'm in GP world, in common ratio world, right? What is the sum of the first n terms? What are those terms? We actually have a, oh, we know what they are. We have the TV now, right? Okay, wait, 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 stop. The first term is just A by itself. And then we get the ratio coming in, right? So AR, AR squared, three is enough. What's my last term? A out of the n minus one. Now before I write that, as you'll see in a second, I am going to put the uh, the penultimate term on as well because it will be useful for the next step I'm about to do. Okay. So I'm going to write this. That's the immediately previous term before the last one. Do you agree? Okay. And then there's my last term. Okay. Because if you think, if you want to go, think back to like your binomial world, right? All these um, powers they're going up, going from left to right. Yeah? Which means going from right to left, the powers are going down, right? So if n was say 10, then 10 minus 1 would be 9, and then this would be 8, and then 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Oh, because you don't lose the a? Oh, no. like, why would it just be like a odd is the n? Okay, because how many, yeah, good question. How many terms are there here? There are n terms, right? Now, remembering that this is a r to the zero, okay? If I ended at a r to the n, okay, then from here up to a r to the n, this is this one is oh wrong color. Uh, this is a r to the one, right? So if I left off a, how many terms are there, including my red a r to the n? There are n terms, but I actually do have an a. So this is n plus one terms. So this is the um, this is the sum, the partial sum up to n plus one, which is not actually what I want. Okay. okay? So that's why I don't end for now. Okay. Now I want to know what this partial sum is. When we were doing APs, we learned Gauss's trick, Gauss's trick, which is all about addition, right? It was pairing things up and adding them. Now pairing things up and adding them makes complete sense if you're trying to do an AP because. Well, why? Why does it make complete sense? Hmm. An AP is formed by addition, right? Like, let's think out the terms. Don't write this because you guys know what this is. The, um, the terms in an AP are A, and then A plus D, and then A plus <coughs> 2D, and so on, right? So an AP is formed by addition. So it shouldn't surprise us that addition is the key to unlock an AP, right? This is a GP. How is a GP constructed? It's not by addition. It's by multiplication. So we ought to expect that multiplication is part of the key to unlocking this thing. Okay? I'll tell you right now, Gauss's trick, well, well our trick before, will not work here, right? If you add um, the partial sum to n to itself and try and do some pairing and that kind of thing, nothing meaningful comes out. Okay? Nothing meaningful comes out. But if I multiply, that's what you just told me, right? If I multiply by the right thing, this thing will just collapse, okay? The question is, what should I multiply by? R? Now, so far, everything else is being multiplied by R, okay? So, you know, let's just try and see where it leads, okay? If I take the nth partial sum and multiply everything by R, okay? This is what I write, okay? So, the first term is A, and so when I multiply by R, it will become? AR. AR. The next term was AR, so it will become AR squared. AR squared, AR cubed, dot, dot, dot. Okay, now I'm going to include this penultimate term again, right? When I multiply by R, what happens to this index? It goes up by 1, right? Just like all the other ones did. So it'll be AR to the N minus 1. And now, because that last term is AR to the N minus 1 and it's also multiplied by R, now I do end on AR. And, but, but only because of this. That, that's why I end there. Okay? Now you have a look. You look at these two lines, right? Actually, there is some pairing that will help me here, right? It's a pairing of a different kind. What pairing might be helpful here? Now I could factorize, but factorizing this would simply get me back to here, right? And so you're kind of like, oh, I multiplied and then factorized. So, okay, that's not very helpful, right? What else could I do? If you times, like, AR and AR N, N, you get AR N, A squared R N minus 1 and 
Keep whoa, 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 whoa. Slow division. down, slow down. You lost me. Say that again slowly. <laughs> you get AR. Division. Yep. AR. Yep. And you, like, add them. Add them. Well, add multiply add them. them, multiply them. Yeah. So you get ARN plus one. And if you do AR squared. Hold on, slow down, slow down. Squared. Uh, if I multiply this squared. by this, I've got two A's hanging around. Yes, you get A squared. RN plus one. Yes. Yeah. And if you do that for the second last term, and the second term, you get the same answer. You mean yeah. this one and this one? Yeah. yeah. So you're saying, yeah, okay. So you're going to pair up a whole bunch of terms, right? And get that. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. I okay. And times the okay. Way. Now, I'd like you to see where that goes. I'd like you to see where it leads. Um, I don't think it's going to lead nowhere, but I don't think it will lead you to 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 this. Either. Remember, that's what we're trying to get, okay. right? Oh. Now, remember I said there's a pairing that's happening here. It's just not as obvious. And admittedly, I did not write it in the most obvious way, okay? Let me try and make the pairing a little more obvious. If I asked you to solve some equations simultaneously, because in a way, that's what I'm asking you to do. I'm asking you to solve for this. That's my unknown, okay? If I showed you an equation, a pair of equations like this. Uh, let's make some up. Let's go um, this. And, uh, no. How about that? Okay. Now, if you saw that pair of equations, just get your simultaneous equations hat on, right? Because that's what you have here. What would be the first thing that jumps out at you to do with this pair of equations? Add them. Subtract them. I would subtract them because I'm going to, what's this method called? This elimination. Method. This is elimination, right? I'm going to eliminate out. Okay. Now. Year like 12, stay with me. What am I going to subtract? And more importantly, what will I eliminate? Okay? What's going to disappear is any terms that are identical. You agree with that? And that's why elimination happens. How many terms do you see that are identical here? Answer, answer a whole bunch of them, right? Look, here we go. This guy and this guy, they're identical. So they're going to go. Right? When I subtract. This guy and this guy, they're going to disappear because they're identical. Right? You following? Okay. Now, by the way, does it matter which one I subtract from which? If I, <laughs> if I call this equation 1 and equation 2... I'm glad someone's listening. No, it doesn't something. matter. It doesn't matter. It works both ways. Now, in this case, it does not matter because... I have a finite number of terms. Remember, I'll show you how badly infinity breaks this in a second. Okay. For now, though, I'm just going to take the second one and subtract the first one from it. Okay. So this is my next line. You happy with that? Okay. Now remember, all of these terms are disappearing. Any terms that are in common between them will disappear. I've already got the first term in common there. What is the final term that's in common between them? Okay. Good. It's the um, the biggest term in the first one and the um well sorry I shouldn't say biggest. It's the last term in the first one and it's the second last one in the second one. Can you okay. do it like S N minus R S N because the one at the top has So we'll we'll see. We'll see what happens if you go the other way around. You'll okay. see it won't end up being too much of a problem either way, as I'll demonstrate. Okay. Therefore, since all of these guys I've paired up vanish away, I get left with A R N take away this lone survivor <laughs> up here, okay? That's all that's left behind. And now, that's the guts of the proof. I don't have to do much more to this, do I? What would you do on the left-hand side? What am I trying to get again? I'm, I'm trying to make SN the subject, right? So I'm going to factorize him out, leaving... One plus one, R minus one. R minus one behind. I can factorize on the right-hand side too, which gives me... One. Okay, and now my last line, right? It's it's stunningly beautiful actually in how simple it is. The nth partial sum. I actually think this is much more attractive than the AP partial sum, right? It's just it's got this symmetry to it. It's symmetry. Yeah, cool. All right. Um, what have I got on the denominator? Sorry, numerator. N minus one. I have this guy and I have this guy. So yes. Yeah. I don't even think Okay. Now let's just suppose. Let's, let's play make-believe, right? Um, if I had gone the other way and done first line takeaway second, right? 
Instead of r minus 1 in here, when I factorize, I will not have r minus 1. I'll have r minus 1. But at the same time, this guy will switch around as well, right? I will get 1 minus r to the end. And in fact, that's an important form. We're going to write it down because it's so useful. Uh, if you switch everything around, and by the way, you didn't need to appeal that far to go back up here to see what happened with the order. All you need to do is multiply the numerator and denominator both by minus 1. That, that'll switch the order around. You see that? Okay. Both of these are useful in their own circumstances, right? Most notably, if R is a big number, if R is a big number, like 2 or 3 or 4 or 5 or 100, right? Then if you put it in here, you'll get a positive. Whereas if you put it in here, you'll get a negative, right? If R is a big number. What number would I want that makes the denominator positive a very here? Negative number. Either, either a very negative number or, or, a, very or, number. or a fraction. Like if I, if I had a half or a quarter or a third in there, I'd still get a positive number here. And we tend to want positives on the denominator, right? So depending on your value of R, you'll choose one of these. Just like depending on what information uh, you've got, you'll choose one or the other form of the um, AP sum.